Hi, this is Lisa Nichols, and welcome back to The Lisa Nichols Show, the place where we come, you come, I come, to get the tools that we want to really take our life to the next level, to live our dreams. I'm so excited about your comments. You know, when you comment, it literally sets me on fire. I love the things you say. I love the fact that we're in this conversation together. Andrew, you said, you said, Lisa, it's my first time here, and thank you for always breaking it down to bite-sized, digestible pieces. You said, quote unquote, I'm starting by making my buy-win dates. Yes, Angie, when you have a goal and you give it a buy-win date, all of a sudden it gets real. And a buy-win date isn't someday in 2019, someday in 2020. It is June 30th, 2018. And I love to add a little extra juice on it. What time in your time zone? Is it six o'clock Pacific Standard Time? 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, will it be done? When you do that, it becomes amazing. And all of a sudden, you're running towards something. Remember, Angie, give yourself some milestones and some daily action steps to get to that date that you have a buy win on. And when you do that, all things change. And I love what Takesha said. You said, quote unquote, I'm too committed to the familiar discomfort. Wasn't that particular episode great? When you learn, hold on, I've, been, I've become too committed to a familiar discomfort versus becoming acquainted with an unfamiliar new possibility. So you said, quote unquote, I need to get committed to a more unfamiliar possibility. I love it. When you have that kind of aha, Takesha, things begin to happen. That's when you begin to welcome in the unknown. Because most of our poor habits, our procrastination, our limited thinking, they're the things that we're familiar with. When you go to the unfamiliar, all of a sudden there's a new possibility that chases it in. So I'm so excited when you guys comment. I love when you comment. That's how we stay connected. So keep on writing. You know, I have so many students who step onto our virtual campus and they're high achievers. And because they're high achievers, they also realize that they hunted a whole lot more when they had less, when they needed to stabilize their life or they needed to get to a particular goal just to allow themselves to breathe. And in the last five years, some 10 years, some 15 years, some longer, uh, they've gotten to a place of complacency. So I get asked the question a lot, how do I jumpstart again? when I've been complacent. You know, I, I found that I had to ask myself this question as well. For so many years, I was working hard to feed Jelani. I was working hard to give him an equal chance. I had this goal that by the time he was 18, I would have transformed our lives. And I ran hard for it and I worked hard for it. And by the time he was 18, our lives were completely transformed and barely recognizable. And I found that I had slowed down a bit, still running, but running at about 70%. And the challenge that you have to watch out for is that your 70% could be someone else's 115% because you are such a game changer. So you can impress a lot of people never playing full out. And you can look up and a year has passed, three years has passed, five years have passed, and you haven't played full out for a while because you've already achieved a lot by some people's standards. But there's still so much more that you can do. I wanna coach you in this way. Dream a dream or set a goal that's big enough to make you get nervous. Oftentimes, if you're not setting a goal that's beyond three years out in front of you, there's not enough to run for. So I want you to look at your goals. Can you achieve them in a year, two years? I want you to set a goal for three years, set a goal for five years, and set a goal for 10 years. Yes, I said 10 years. When I did this phenomenal program called Lifebook, they had me set 10 year goals and I was so uncomfortable. I sat there silent for a moment. I hadn't thought 10 years out about my life. But if you go out far enough, 10, five, three, then all of a sudden you're playing for something so much bigger. And then set a goal that makes your knees knock and your teeth chatter a bit. If you know how to get to your goal, you're not dreaming big enough. Now the goal also has to be realistic. So it has to be realistic, something you can do if you're currently making 80,000, then your goal in three years isn't to make 500,000 unless you have a path that's viable to get you there, that's real. The thing that's really important to remember about a goal 
is that if you set lofty goals that you will never hit because they're not realistic in the first place, you have to set realistic goals. It's not doesn't mean you're not capable, doesn't mean that you don't believe in yourself, but realistic goals. If you set a bunch of unrealistic goals and you don't hit them, every time you don't hit a goal, you, you lose just a little bit of hope in yourself, a little bit of faith in yourself. And then what happens is you look up five years, 10 years from now, and you're not dreaming anymore. You're not setting goals anymore. You're afraid to tell anyone. So set a goal that makes your knees knock and your teeth chatter a bit. Set a goal that's three years out in front of you, set one that's five years, and set one that's 10 years. As a matter of fact, set several in all those timelines. And then hook your caboose to the train of other people who are running as fast as you are. Surround yourself in a community that inspires you to want to stand on your tippy toes. They inspire you because they're doing so much. Now, they believe in values, they believe in faith, they believe in family, but they also believe in running hard, playing hard, and living big. Because if you're the biggest fish in your community, then that's okay. You just need to get a second community to play inside of as well. And so if you find yourself going, hold on, I've become complacent. Walk out 15 years and go, do I want to look back in 15 years and this was the best that I did? The answer probably is no. What do you want to say? What story do you want to tell? What story do you want other people to tell about your life? If, and even if it's something casual like piano or Spanish or, or Italian or something you want to take on, like play big, become a student again. Oftentimes we've transcended that student space and we've gone into teaching, we've gone into educating, we've gone into management, we've gone into leadership. We forget the gift of always being a student. So I invite you to recognize that the largest room in the world is the room for more learning. The largest opportunity in the world is an opportunity for more transformation. When you take those on, your life becomes a constant demonstration to everyone that's watching you. Remember, this is not a monologue. I am not here to just entertain you. I am your girl. We're in a dialogue together. We're in a conversation. We're family. I want to hear your comments. I want to hear how you feel. What about, you know, sitting back and setting tangible goals or becoming complacent? What was the aha for you? Or what was the BOL? Hashtag BOL. Breakthrough out loud. Like, ooh, Lisa, that was straight between my eyes. I needed to hear that. What did you need to hear? Or what question or desire did it jar in you? What did, what, what, what did it shake up in you? I want to hear from you. Please comment below. Tell me what happened. Ask me a question. Give me an example. And then always remember to share this tribe with your friends. Share it with your family. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. I want to be in a long-term relationship with you. We got way too many quickies and quick, shallow relationships happening now. I want a long-term relationship where we get to know each other and we get to grow together. And I mean that. This is your tribe. I am your sister. And I always will tell you that I believe in you and I love you.